Road is short, we're traveling on You might be fragile, you might be feeling strong But you don't know till your time is through Sometimes faith is the best you can do All this started when I became serious about pursuing music Music is about the truth, you know. I like that magic about songs, that they take you places that you don't really know. When you're writing them, you might not know what you're, what you're really writing about. It's just like destiny. Maybe he just instinctually knew on some subconscious level that he was finding his way home. My next guest's self-titled debut album of last year has been described as a gritty masterwork of melancholic and atmospheric Americana. Pretty fantastic. St. Vincent de Paul. Yes. I was writing and touring with Mary Gaucher, and she had been left at an orphanage, and the name of the, it was St. Vincent de Paul. While I was at St. Vincent, I started working on a song about a kid who lived there who might not know who his father was. And when I started writing the song, I didn't know that it was actually about myself. I got my face from a man that I have not met. I've been looking for him, but I ain't found him yet. And if there's a place where missing things go, Either he's there or I am, but I know it's not both. And I had taken a DNA test. I wanted to know about my family and my father who had passed away many years ago. When I got the results back, it said that I was actually, my father was 100% Irish. You believed, like your dad that you'd grown up with, that you were toned down. Yeah, so I didn't actually think I could sing, but I started writing songs I wanted to do as 48. Calling me back to St. Vincent de Paul. If we met on the street, would I know his face? And would he look into mine and find their trace of a woman he loved once a long time ago? Would I pass him right by and not even know? Like a basket of rushes in a river of men. And I hear the bells ringing. I hear the bells call. They're calling me back to St. Vincent de Paul. It's a world of concrete and a world of men New faces blown from the places they From the get-go, ever since I saw him perform on stage and ever since I sat down and shared songs with him and talked about songwriting, I knew that he brought his heart to what he works on. It's all so fresh for him. It's like a discovery. He's so new at it, but he's coming at it from a mature person's point of view. I've never met anybody that had so many interesting and crazy stories. Ed has a, a good way of storytelling, uh, which identifies really much with the, uh, with the Irish psyche as well. We love stories, we love poetry, we love legends. And the idea of that in music uh, is something that appeals to me. That castle thing was amazing. We were in the kitchen and Sean, who runs the place and he plays the flute, it's yeah. amazing. And he was telling us the story of the haunted characters. And while he was telling us the story, uh, the shelves, faucet in the, shelves, the shelves. kitchen sink turned on, full on. Yes. You know, just like... <laughs> Water just went on. <laughs> yeah, that happened sometimes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We were all like, holy smokes, you know, yeah. I couldn't believe it. And then I was doing some stuff right before I went on. I was kind of warming up my voice a little bit. And then the faucet came on again. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not sure what commentary that is. But. <laughs> and 
Ireland, we got to play some very special venues. We were in Lepp Castle, a haunted castle. The show we played was really remarkable. Maybe it was the ghosts <laughs> occupying space in all of us, but there was something really magical about it. Mr. Ed Romanoff. When I heard Sacred Wreck when he did it at the Radio 1 concert, the first thing he did here, I was really stunned how good it was outside the record, and it made me go back to the record quite a bit. It was great that they had Ed on the works, which is the main arts show, and they know their stuff, they don't take it lightly. From Brooklyn, Ed Romanoff. Music is the common thread between people, you know, it's a vibration. It's like a life form. So somewhere out there, maybe, there's yes. Jack the Lad, who's your dad. Well, yeah, so we went to Meath yesterday, because I don't have a name, I don't know who it is, but I know that the family comes from Meath, and we went up there to see if there's anybody that looks like me. Everybody looked like me, <laughs> yeah. Um, and actually, we went to Tara at the recommendation of a bartender, and we went, and it's the home of the kings, and Nile of the Nine Hostages, which is one of the descendants that showed up on my DNA test and the thought that I was walking on the only hill of dirt that I know of that my true ancestors walked on was deep, you know, like I could yeah. feel it walking up yeah. there and we were up there right at sunset, it was really yeah. magical. The whole thing is so dreamlike that, I mean, I do feel like something is shifting, you know. We got to play on a radio station, Philip King on RTE, and we played St. Vincent de Paul and he asked, what's the song about? And I told him real quick, and he stopped the program and came around and shook my hand and he said, welcome home. I'd like everybody here in the room to put their hands together and give a very warm Irish welcome to Mr. Ed Romana, please. <laughs> welcome home, Ed. <laughs> welcome home. Welcome home to Ireland. Get that right.